Gue tau diri gue tau. Kau lama juga cuci di dalam kau lama dua belas cuci di dalam. Aling duduk di tak kias di duduk di saje ni. Tak kasi tau nak dengar tak je sebes. Tak kasi tau nak dengar tak je sebes. Pilihan yang kita tadi tu tadi tu betul tak tahu di tu ni se. Ota di saya di tiri kasur ota. Tunggih tamje seba yi chun di tue ne to me be. Mi ji ne la tang wa ta yong su mi si chiri ta go si. O ta di kanjian di kyo da ale ngin. Tunggih tamje seba yi chun di tue ne to me be. Mi ji ne la tang wa ta yong su mi si chiri ta go si. Yesterday we looked at these two points with the uh, the, the last four verses. Uh, one point was the way in which we are born in cyclic existence, and then the, the second one was how to, to stop cyclic existence. And now we're moving on to verse 39, which says, One who has heard thus the doctrine extinguishing all suffering, but does not examine it, and fears the fearless state, trembles due to ignorance. うん。ตรงนี้ทำเจ้าเสบายชื่นดีทุ่นตัวมีจีเนี่ยตามว่าตรงยงสุมีชีชีตากรเสียดีรึเปล่าตามว่าตามว่าตามว่าตามว่าต
Kaja Shetani, Tin Deva Mavich, Kabu Mavich, Tani Pa, Deva Telen Jiga, Soru Chiri, Tajugo, Kanje. Now, uh, then having realized, uh, sorry, having heard that and not having uh, analyzed or checked, what does it say here? The, the word it uses here is uh, um, does not examine it. So uh, actually, it means it hasn't and yet doesn't examine. Uh, the meaning of, uh, of uh, thusness or uh, emptiness. So such foolish people become very uh, uh, angry or full of hatred at this uh, source of fearlessness. Any lumbu tunzu, any keba in a tan shiri or mari, tangu or mari, kanje, mega or yungu or mari, ta lumbu tunzu, any tele shi, any kanje, tanje, mega or chetra, what in the yungu is gorda, the dekonangi neda mahibe ongi. So you see, a, a wise person, if they were to uh, hear this teaching, they wouldn't be upset about it, they wouldn't dislike it, they wouldn't become uh, angry about it. But a foolish person who hears that teaching, uh, the, you know, the, the, uh, hears the, the teaching on that, uh, that Dharma, which uh, extinguishes uh, all suffering, uh, not uh, really analyzing the, the meaning of dependent arising and, uh, and uh, emptiness, they become, uh, they dislike that, they're, they're, not, they're, they're not pleased to hear that uh, teaching. And then, uh, so uh, they, Become, uh, th they're afraid due to not knowing, mm. due to totally not knowing. That kind of, uh, Tangbo de Coil of Jugrim de Shet, Tene Coil and Dogdan de Shet, there were only that doing it of a pain de Shet, doing it of a pain de Tane, doing it of a pain de Shet. That only Tarwa and Hind, the Tarwa singing the one and the Niger is Shen Shevet, she was the Tarwa singing the We've now looked at uh, three points. The first point, which we looked at yesterday, was the way in which we uh, we are born in psychic existence. The second point was the uh, the way that uh, one can leave psychic existence. The third point, which we've just been looking at, uh, is the benefits of um, understanding uh, selflessness. And then now the fourth point that's coming up is the nature of that. Um, that state beyond sorrow or nirvana, which comes through um, realizing emptiness. Tapena Tongba ni tat kanje tendi gi tendi gi ta gi kanje tendi in beta gi Tongba di she yundu zane ani Tongba di she yundu zane kanje denzi di sen duguri ani nyumu kanje ta chadang tu tu shin duguri ani kunju kibe tungi tu tu nilingi pungbu tu tu unpa sen duguri wale ani yongu chume. Nini Rahigitongba when a person, um, uh, when certain people uh, hear uh, this teaching on emptiness, hear that when you realize emptiness through dependent arising, then you'll be able to completely eliminate your uh, true grasping mind. Through eliminating that, you will eliminate all of the uh, other mental afflictions of attachment and hatred and so forth. Then through eliminating that, uh, you will no longer create uh, the, the the causes for suffering. You'll never. You'll no longer create uh, the karma for being born in psychic existence. As a result of that, you won't need to experience all the difference of different types of uh, suffering, like the, the seven types of suffering and so on, and 
and uh, or in other words you won't uh, again have to experience the the um uh, the the, the uh, what do we call it? the the grasped or the ag aggregates the aggregates of attachment you won't have to experience that anymore so uh, certain people when they hear that uh, because of not understanding because of misunderstanding they think that this sounds to them like uh, it's a teaching that uh, all of these you know that, that there's nothing that nothing exists so then when they hear that then uh, they're, they're not pleased by that they're displeased and they become uh, angry about it now, uh, in the, the, the fundamental verses on wisdom, uh, another text by Nagarjuna, there's one line that says, uh, uh, through the, ext the extinguishing of uh, karma and the afflictions, uh, one is liberated. No. The, uh, now, uh, so karma, um, that's straightforward, that means like uh, doing actions, action or, do, you know, doing work. Then uh, the, where it says uh, the, the mental afflictions, that's referring to uh, attachment and hatred. So then... Uh, the uh, uh, so these uh, arise as uh, from the elaborations of the true grasping mind and through uh, uh, overcoming the uh, the true grasping mind then uh, one uh, achieves liberation mm Now, um, we, 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 this means that what we're saying is that uh, the, the true grasping mind, um, sort of like, no, wait a minute, the, the, um, the mental afflictions are like elaborations uh, of the, uh, the, this uh, true grasping mind or the true grasping conceptualizing mind. And the way that it, uh, the way that that works, the way the, the connection between them, uh, the true grasping mind and the afflictions of attachment and uh, anger, the way that works is uh, can be understood through the analogy of the, the of the uh, what the so-called body uh, faculty, which pervades the whole of the body, and therefore uh, pervades all of the other uh, faculties like the the eye eye faculty, eye organ, and the ear the organ, and so forth. So, in a uh, in a similar uh, way, the uh, the the, uh, eye gra uh, the the true grasping mind uh, pervades uh, all of the other uh, um, the mental afflictions. So, uh, in the sense that they all rely upon it, just like all of the other 
uh, faculties of the body rely upon or sort of depend upon uh, the body faculty. So in, in this way, when you've uh, removed what uh, all of the other faculties uh, rely upon, then all of the other faculties also uh, sort of pack up or they, 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 they're, they're also sort of um, eliminated. So when you get rid of the true grasping mind, then you also get rid of all of the other mental afflictions. Uh, so since there is that connection of dependence, if you want to get rid of all of the other mental afflictions of uh, attachment, which is craving for beautiful things, anger, which is uh, you know, towards the uh, unpleasant objects, then the way to do that is by getting rid of the, the true grasping uh, mind of ignorance itself. Mm-hmm. And then as for how to uh, free oneself of this, uh, uh, this uh, true grasping mind or the con- uh, confusion, uh, sometimes it's called bewilderment or or close-mindedness. So how to uh, get rid of that is by uh, meditating on uh, meditating on dependent arising. So there is a, a, another, this is a, uh, an explanation of another line that comes from the writings of, of Nagarjuna. I'm not sure whether it comes from the, the root verses of, on wisdom or not, but anyway, it comes from his uh, writing. So uh, there's that line that says, by uh, meditating on dependent arising, or by realizing dependent arising, one eliminates the uh, bewilderment or ignorance. So in actual fact, uh, this uh, is always also talking about uh, the way in which we enter into psychic existence and the way to leave psychic existence. So it comes down to the same point that was being made uh, yesterday in those uh, earlier verses. Mm-hmm. Yangel <laughs> Now we're still uh, uh, working on this uh, idea uh, or the, the fourth point, which is the, the nature of uh, uh, nirvana. So now uh, what it was saying uh, just before was that, uh, that s- certain people when they hear uh, the, the teaching on emptiness, become uh, afraid, and this makes them, uh, then this leads them to feel uh, anger. So where that f- uh, how that fear is expressed is uh, they think that uh, this teaching on emptiness is saying that the self doesn't exist, that the, uh, the aggregates uh, don't exist, and this is what makes them afraid, and then they, uh, that's what, uh, what they get upset about. So now, uh, Principally, who it is that uh, misunderstands emptiness in that way would be the, the Vaibhashikas and the Sotrantikas, uh, both of whom do uh, accept the idea of uh, true existence. They, they do accept that certain phenomena are truly existent. <laughs> We're looking at verse 40 now. That all these will not exist in nirvana, 
does not frighten you? Why does uh, the, their, their non-existence explained here uh, cause you fright? Mm. Now, where it says uh, Nirvana here, long, long, uh, where it says 40, yeah, where it says uh, Nirvana here. Now, according to their uh, system, there are, there are two types of Nirvana. There's the Nirvana with remainder and the Nirvana without remainder. Here it's specifically talking about the Nirvana with remainder, uh, sorry, without remainder, because according to their, uh, their uh, assertions, uh, when one achieves nirvana without remainder, then all of the f all form and uh, consciousness of that being become totally non-existent, just like uh, the you know the ashes uh, being carried uh, the, the the ashes left by a fire or caused by a fire being blown away. <laughs> Uh, so, in fact, what's happening here is that uh, a contradiction in their thinking is being pointed out because, uh, um, because uh, on the one hand, uh, they, uh, they themselves assert that on achieving nirvana without remainder, uh, the continuity of the uh, you know, physical matter of the person and the, uh, their consciousness uh, uh, discontinue, completely uh, stop. And yet, at the, uh, so they become, in other words, they become totally extinguished, totally non-existent. And yet at the same time, uh, they are, uh, uh, and they're quite, they, they accept that, of course, I mean, they're quite okay with that. But they, what they don't accept is the teaching here that by meditating on emptiness, then uh, one's uh, the contaminated aggregates uh, which arise uh, under the control of uh, karma and the afflictions will become non-existent. So why? Uh, so the question is being asked: Why is it that you're not afraid of them becoming non-existent uh, in nirvana, and yet you're uh, afraid of, the, or you don't like the idea of them becoming non-existent here? Well, yeah, just that can I hear your mother's or hear your mother's need to hear the two centrale chill, or what? So uh, the, the, the point that's, that's being made to them is you don't need to be afraid. Mm uh why is the removal here of the self removal anyway and of the aggregates not like by you? 
Ah, pumpu sewa di 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 pumpu mebas java ra di inji di di double chi shake do. Pumpu sewa do ada kan je. No. Nanti kita pergi. Pumpu sewa, pumpu sewa do ada. No. Oh, tak tanda di kasur orang di di dah. Tadi tu pumpu orang hingi coba sewa lah sewa. Di ni kau kau chi shiji mega kau mega rig di. Tapi ni kalau pumpu mebas di bawah ni bani dah. Pungbukabe tarwa tini ngobo yino shi na ngobo pungbu pungbukabe sa reba tarwa tini ngobo yino shi na pungbukabe tarwa tini ni ba ni ba dirwa ta ni ba che di ma di di tangbu dirwa ah tangbu dirwa ta tangbu dirwa do thala dami sa di thala dami pungbu me kadi tarwa tini do ta de pungbu sa wala Dini kyoko chib chib ni gaz, dini tisu ni. Lao la de, inji de de lo sang. Ta la ta mi pungbu me sa de, inji lo ta de ba. Ta ta wa la kan sa ki ta me ji, pungbu ran shi ki tu ba yang me be e che de ba. Ta wa tup di zan de, kan sa ki ta me ba ta wa pungbu ran shi ki tu ba me ba to gu de e che de ba. Ran shi me ba yang sa de ba, ran shi ki tu ba me be e sa de ba. Ka de ta wa, ka de ta wa, ta sa. Tada kakba tinda ndue la asa rwa. Ta tarwa tupdu zane kansa ki ta yoma ri. Tindu chue ki ta yoma ri che rwa. Pungbu rang shi ki tupa yang mebe es. Ka di tarwa. Ta tada kakba tinda ndue che. Ta ndue ri che rwa. Ta da pungbu rang shi ki tupa sewa rwa ta. Ta da pungbu rang shi ki tupa sewa yin za. Tini kyo 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 te yis. Kyo ni chi mi ka se. Gawa rik di yis rwa. Rangshin ki chua sewa la dini kyo ko chi mi ka di gawa rik di Tarwe ne ka na pungbu me ba ndwebe cha ro os tiri da Tarwe ne ka na pungbu me ba ndwebe cha ro os Ta di karasik do ka di Dungin tarwe Dungin le tarwe tapa rangshin ki chua ko Di lehen te le ta tangki lehen te le ya Dungin le tarwe tarwe se ya di ane Rangshin ki chua res Dungin le tanda Hame ki chana ane kya rang shi gmi do ka de karche ni shi gura so chan de Ani lami itu dungi le tarwa tarwa orang ini juga mewah saya di kami saya di ini tarwa di kanje orang ini juga dua res jadi orang tarwa di orang ini juga dua yang jadi aku hiu mah res terus kita doa tu tu di lain tu lah. No, there's a a reply coming to that question. It's not literally in the the text. So the question was asked. Well, you know, why is it that you're afraid of you you you're not afraid that uh, the, the form and uh, continuity of form and, and consciousness cease in nirvana, but uh, you're afraid to, to hear this teaching uh, uh, that you know they that they're uh, non-existent here, or you know they become non-existent here. Um, so the, uh, the 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 reply that they uh, give is because uh, that nirvana, that uh, uh, what do we call it, the nirvana with um, with the uh, without a remainder, that nirvana uh, is naturally existent or it's inherently existent. That's why uh, we're not afraid of that. Mm. <laughs> Rupa, dah ada pungbu ni kan orang hingga coba yang mana aje. Khati tarwa tinta dus, dah ada pungbu ni jadi orang hingga coba sewa tinta dugu orang aje. Rupa, dah ada pungbu orang hingga coba orang itu orang hingga meja tinta dugu orang aje. Dah ada pungbu sewa lah, dini kau kau cium ikan aje. Rupa, dah tarwa ni aku suruh ni lembu ni orang kau cuma dah ada ni kanje pungbu tu tu pah sewa tela ni kau kari cian makan aje. Rupa. Tangki korang kita tarwa tarwa tu tu tuan ni, ni kanji tarwa di ranking kita tuan ni tarwa inza tarwa ranking kita tuan inza, ni sih min dosa semua. Jadi tuan ada tarwa tu tu tuan ni, dah ada pungbu di sewar wa, dah ada pungbu sewa inza, dah ada pungbu di ranking kita tuan di sewar wa. Jadi tuan dah ada pungbu ni, eh ranking kita tuan sewa di ni, kau cimiga, eh kau cimiga di sini, ni baru tu kagur di sini, dah ada pungbu ranking kita tuan sewa di la. Jadi tuan kata tu. Tabat ini, angsur tabat tabat orang ini cuba insan dah tak ingin dos. Ani dah di kabel yang ada kas dah tapung ni jadi orang ini orang ini cuba dah dalam muda 
now, um, so they're, uh, they're saying, well, uh, then, uh, when, you achieve, the, when you achieve liberation, that liberation is, uh, uh, is inherently existent, so there's nothing to be uh, frightened about there. And yet, uh, they do say that when one achieves liberation, and he was specifically thinking about the nirvana with remainder, that there is no self and there, is no, uh, there are no aggregates. Everything completely ceases, everything is completely extinguished. So now, in that case, uh, in, in, in Nirvana, uh, or when they achieve the, the, the liberation that they, um, that they assert, then there's going to be uh, no uh, inherently existing self, there's no inherently existing aggregates. So in that case, since even uh, then there is no uh, so, uh, inherently existing self and aggregates, why are you uh, 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 frightened to hear the teaching that there is no uh, inherently existing self and aggregates now? now um so what uh, what we are telling them is that uh, when you achieve uh, the liberation then uh, the the self uh, we're saying that uh, all that happens when you achieve liberation is that the, there is no self or aggregates which arise due to the uh, to the mental afflictions. We're not saying that there's no such thing as uh, liberation or nirvana. We're not saying that there's no liberation. Uh, we sti we, um, so, so you don't need to be afraid that we're saying that there's no, there's no such thing as a liberation, that the liberation that you achieve doesn't exist. We're simply saying that the liberation that, uh, in that liberation that you uh, achieve, there is no uh, self or aggregates which arise due to the, mental, uh, the, the karma and mental afflictions. This is that clear for you? <laughs> uh, now, uh, so uh, to put this uh, uh, briefly, 
they were saying they were saying they're af afraid of the the, the kind of uh, liberation that we uh, talk about here, but they're not afraid of uh, the liberation as they said because as far as they're concerned, that liberation is uh, self-existent. So they're not afraid because there is that the liberation uh, which is self-existent, even though they do say that the you know the uh, there's no uh, mind and there's no body, all that ceases. So here uh, we're saying there's also no need to. Uh, be afraid because we're also not saying that there's no liberation just that when you achieve liberation uh, the s uh, self and aggregates which arise due to the karma and the uh, mental afflictions uh, uh, are no longer uh, existent mm -hmm. Now we're looking at uh, 40, 42, is it? Yeah, 42. Yeah, yeah, that's right, 42. If nirvana is not a non thing, just how could it have thingness? Uh, the extinction of the misconception of things and non-things is called nirvana. 42. This way. No. 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 I think no, uh, this one's actually a bit more straightforward. It's saying that uh, nirvana, this uh, uh, inherently existing nirvana, or nirvana, you know, that we're talking about again, the, the nirvana without remainder, uh, which is uh, inherently existent, which they're asserting, is neither a thing nor a non-thing, nor both a thing uh, and a non-thing, nor neither of, the, of those two. Mm. So how does that fit in with our uh, English here? Uh, if nirvana is not a, uh, not a non-thing, just how could it have thingness? The extinction of the... The extinction of the... Uh, it doesn't come out exactly like that, does it? Mm. Um, so, anyway, what it's saying is that Nirvana is not a uh, uh, a thing, nor a non-thing, nor both, nor neither. Since uh, the, the uh, nirvana is a, a cessation of uh, inherently existing things and non-things, then uh, how could it, how could it, how could it be a, um, the, uh, an inherently existing thing 
and how could it be a, a, an inherent existing non-thing, or how could it, and likewise, how could it possibly be a, a, an inherent existing mm. both, a, a, you know, in, an inherent existing <laughs> both thing and non-thing? Oh yeah, yeah, thank you. Then. Excuse me. No. Di kapla de ngobo sena kare. Tan di kare alda. Tan ngobo de jidan anju ta kanje tunji nivose ya korwa tunji nivose ya di. Ngemi sena tunji mini nivose ya takana ruwa. Ta ti zawa ji ti mare tangi ko ti se soa. Chendo ni nyangen le de wase ya di ene ranhi ngi tuwa yinza nga hi ngi ndu se soa. Yang dia saya di sini, yang ini dia di sana, yang dia korang yau, korang ingat tu dia, dia ngah sih main dosa semua. Tapi tanda tu, yang ini dia betul tak? Ngobo, yang ini dua orang sih ingat tu macam yau mari, stika yang tu kan? Ti yang ini ngobo yau kor, yang ini ngobo main bot tak kor macam macam ni yau kor itu tu. Yang ini dia betul ni orang sih ingat tu macam saya di ini ngobo yang mari, ini ngobo main bot tak kor yang mari. Jadi tuan yang ini dia betul orang sih ingat tu macam sah ini yau mari, si yau mari orang yang dia. Tapi tuan orang sih ingat main bot tu cukup kaya di tika dia yau mari lagi. Orang sih ingat cukup kaya yau mari, orang sih ingat main bot tu cukup yau mari, tempat main bot tu cukup yau mari. Now remember that the uh, person, uh, this sort of person, is saying that they're not afraid of uh, nirvana, you know, the, the nirvana without remainder, because that nirvana is a liberation which is uh, self-existent or inherently existent. So now, um, what's principally going on here is a refutation of uh, true existence or inherent existence. So the reply to that is that. Uh, uh, there, there, there's no such thing as in, an inherently existing a nirvana or liberation, because if it did exist, it would have to be either a thing, which uh, is uh, you know the, the kind of uh, uh, we're using the term as we normally would, uh, uh, you know the thing which is defined or functioning thing which did, is defined as um, uh, that which is able to perform a function. So a non-thing would be the opposite of that, you know, something which is permanent. So. Uh, there's no such thing as an inherently existing nirvana because if, it, if there were such a thing, it would either have to be a thing or a non-thing. And since it's neither, therefore it doesn't exist. Di lain tu le, yang dia tu dia orang yang dia orang hingga tu orang yau es, lain ni, lain ni jika tu, di hingga tu semua, di sana ni tak tak ada pumbu la semua tu tu saya bade, tak ada pumbu saya tu le, ni kira, kalau saya yau mari, kalau yang dia le kira yang dia yau tu hingga tu orang tu tu yang dia yau tu orang kerja cik saya, tak tanda, tengi korang yang dia orang hingga tu orang saya di saya ni tu, tak tanda di yang dia saya tu orang hingga tu orang yau na, yau na tuan je ni baca ni yau tu, yau na tuan je ni ni baca ni yau tu, tak tinggi ni je yau mari, jadi orang yang dia saya je ni, kan je orang hingga tu orang je ni tu kan, kita tu kaya orang tu. Well, what's been going on here then is that the the we have a a certain kind of person who's saying that who's afraid at this teaching on emptiness, but isn't afraid of the nirvana. Uh, without the remainder where the self and the aggregates all become uh, non-existent. And when asked, why is it that you're uh, not afraid about that, but you're afraid of this teaching on the, uh, the uh, emptiness, then they say it's because that nirvana is, uh, is inherent existence, so there's nothing to be uh, afraid about. So then uh, we, we say in reply to that, that uh, in any case, um, what we're, we're not saying that there's no nirvana, we're just saying that uh, in nirvana there's no uh, self or aggregates that arise due to the uh, karma and the mental afflictions. And not only that, but in any case, uh, an inherently existing uh, nirvana uh, is just uh, impossible. Because if it did exist, it'd have to either be a thing or a non-thing. And since it's neither of those, therefore it doesn't exist. That is it. Makes sense to that. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that I'm saying that I'm 
So no the there's a reply coming to that from uh, the other side, which is that if you're saying there's no inherently existing liberation, this is a, a nihilist. This is a nihilist assertion because uh, you're saying that it uh, doesn't exist at all. If it's not inherently existing, it can't exist at all. So this is nihilist, and uh, what you're uh, uh, what you're holding is wrong view, and that's in verse. 43, in brief, the view of nihilism is that uh, effects of actions do not exist. Without merit and leading to a bad state, it is regarded as a wrong view. Um, uh, when we have um, uh, clarified our position, uh, just to repeat that, uh, the, the reply comes that uh, what we're saying is is a wrong view. It's uh, it, it, we've 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 uh, gone to an extreme. We've gone to the extreme of non-existence because by saying that liberation is not inherently existent for them, it's it's like saying that it doesn't exist at all. Mm -hmm. Dona <laughs> Um, uh, uh, then, uh, uh, in ex uh, by way of explaining this uh, uh, verse, uh, wrong view refers to the uh, the idea or the thought that there is uh, no such thing as uh, meritorious karma or non-meritorious karma. What is explaining here actually is the distinction between a wrong view and a correct view, correct view or, or right view, perfect view. Um, so, um, in a, uh, because there's a difference uh, in a, by, by explaining the, the difference between saying that, uh, or the view that there is no such thing as in, uh, inherent existence, and the uh, the view that there is no such thing as karma. <laughs> In other words, uh, although they're making this accusation that uh, the view that there is no such thing as an inherently existing uh, nirvana and so forth is wrong view, uh, our position is that, uh, the, uh, that that's not a uh, wrong view, far from it. Wrong view, uh, it's actually a correct view, the view that there's no such thing as inherent existence. Wrong view would be when you um, believe that there's uh, no such thing as a karma, uh, you know, meritorious or uh, demeritorious. Mm. So, uh, um, we're looking at verse uh, 44 here then. 
in brief, the view of existence is that effects of actions exist, meritorious and conducive to happy uh, transmigrations. It is regarded as a right view. Mm. No. 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 The, uh, the view that there is no inherently existing liberation is not wrong view, it's a correct view, uh, and it's a correct view in, the, in, in being the, 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 the method for uh, gaining liberation from cyclic existence. No, I'm not talking about it. Soon the main song I didn't love what I hear. Don't know you ever tell any leg in the years ever. Soon I'm dendro gutumba. Yanda tower he shed or study yanda with our he shed or yanda with our he shed or study. Ta, hm. She be met on you, you she shed or say, and the carry daughter, hm. Hm. Lende meva needle. Mitchell's <laughs> Nelu gis, Ravaka to go up. Ranging gis, turn soon to the twinkit in the Mabel Lamb of Mija Wolf, said Rava. Lend a Mabel Mendivicher. Money Mabel Mau Kegi, Cadet Rangingi. You were soon to a twinkit in the Mabel Mau Lambert Hawishina. Rangingi, you were soon to a dinner Mabel Mau Lambert Hawishina. One of the teaching those of Pumba Yavaya, teacher Milan, Lady Gata. Kunde meva soon chung a sauce. Then these are the Gado Cadiranji. You ever soon chung us Cadiranji? They go to that. Chidanda did it, she be made on Yushichir. She be made on Yushichir, dig down so no land ever. She be made on Yushichir, said the bar. Indeed, can't you love a sort of just a she be made on Yushichir? You ever soon chung a chair. Cadet Mm she <laughs> Rajinki, <laughs> That was my idea. I let us take down, consulted the new shot. That does can't 
this is uh, quite uh, difficult, isn't it? So anyway, Ken Shumche would like to sort of give some uh, background explanation on these things. Mm-hmm. As we were saying before, uh, empty, dependent arising, and uh, middle way are basically the same thing. Oh, yeah, that's the same thing. That's the same thing. That's the same now, um, I know that uh, there's a, quite a few of you that already understand these things, but uh, there could be some that uh, some here that uh, uh, you know not, not not so clear. So um, I'll go through these uh, ideas. So now, when we say that, uh, when we say empty, let me use this word empty. It, we're not, it doesn't have the, uh, the, the simple connotation of like when you've got a cup with no, uh, nothing in it and then you just say, my cup's empty. It's not mm. empty like that. When we say empty, we're talking about empty of uh, self-existence or existence from its own side. And then when we talk about uh, dependent arising, then we're, uh, we're talking about how things depend upon so many other factors, such as the, uh, the basis for the imputation, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, conceptual mind that's in, uh, imputing and so forth. Now, when you reflect on how things are dependent and you think of uh, uh, the, the various things that they depend upon, this uh, removes any idea you might have that things can exist independently. When we are reciting our uh, tantric uh, practices, tantric sadhanas, then we often come across this uh, phrase, everything becomes empty or this and that becomes empty. And there also, the, uh, when it says empty, it, doesn't, uh, it, it means exactly the same thing. It means uh, n- uh, empty of self-existence, empty of existing from its own side because of uh, existing through depending upon uh, many other factors. <laughs> Uh, so uh, it, this, this is uh, something that uh, applies to everything. So whenever we say uh, uh, such and such a thing is empty, it means that they're, they're empty of or empty by nature. In other words, empty of existing from their own side. There are two different types of uh, phenomena. Uh, There are things and non-things, or for things, sometimes we say functioning thing or effective phenomenon, Uh, something which is able to uh, perform a function. 
And there are three categories of uh, thing. You've got uh, matter or form, and then the second one is consciousness, and the third is the non-associated, demindruji, non-associated, non-associated. So uh, form, that would refer to such things as shape and color, and shapes and colors and so forth, everything which is a, uh, it counts as form, uh, is uh, is empty of self existent there's no uh, existence there's uh, no such uh, color thing as a color or shape or whatever it might be that's self existent so forms are empty of self existence consciousness uh, which means our different types of consciousness like eye consciousness ear consciousness and so on those are also those are uh, also don't exist in and of themselves uh, inherently uh, from their own side and then also uh, uh, the category of things which we call the non-associated demindruji. Uh, this includes the uh, impermanence itself, you know, the ca or the, and like as a category, um, impermanence, the product, thing, it's, uh, thing it also is included in there, functioning thing is also included in that third one. And none of those also is uh, self-existent. So there's no such thing as a thing which is self-existent. <laughs> ตักซานยอมาเรคุงตัดติดิเชคันเจรุบจิซานยอมาเรคันเลยมาเดบะคันเลยมาเดบะรุบจิซานยอมาเรตัดดิเชเชลติมินดัวเพจิเซบะบะ
uh, there's no space uh, uh, there, because there's something obs uh, obstruct, you know, obstructing there. Now, if I were to get up and uh, uh, walk out or walk away, then there would be a space there again. The, um, uh, the, it's because of the fact that there was space there that we were able to put this uh, table here and we were able to put this chair here. It's because there was uh, space there on the chair that I was able to sit down. If there hadn't been space, then, um, then uh, uh, th none of that would have been uh, possible. So then in, in this way, we can see that the space is something which is dependent. So space depends upon uh, a lack of uh, tangibility a lack of anything tangible, a lack of anything uh, obstructing uh, where that space is. So in this way, because it's dependent, uh, it's empty, because it's empty of existing uh, in and of itself, independently of anything else. So the main thing uh, here is that uh, whenever we say that everything is empty, we need to understand what that means is everything is empty of uh, self existence or existence from its own side, independent of anything else. <laughs> If, if something were self-existent, it would have to be truly existent. If it were truly existent, then uh, there would also have to be self-existence. So for this reason, given that when we say self-existent, it means existing from its own side, independent of anything else, that um, the Prasangikas use dependent arising to uh, establish emptiness or to negate self-existence. They say everything is empty because everything is dependent or dependent arising. Uh, so then uh, we can talk about different types of uh, dependent uh, or we can talk about dependence in uh, different ways. Uh, when we talk about the dependent in the sense of uh, dependent arising or arising through dependence, uh, we're mainly talking about uh, causal phenomena. We're talking about how uh, uh, results arise or occur, come into being through depending upon uh, causes. But, and then there, there's another kind of, uh, we can also talk uh, uh, about dependence in another sense, which is depending uh, through relying. When, we, when we're talking about uh, dependence in the sense of uh, arising through depending, arising through depending upon cause and uh, conditions, uh, we can look, for example, at how uh, children uh, are born through depending upon their parents. We can look at how uh, later uh, periods of time arise through depending upon earlier periods of time. So when we're talking about 
the, the dependence in the sense of a, a, a rising through depending. Uh, we're talking about uh, cause and effect, and we're talking about the way, the way in which uh, effects or results depend upon their causes. And this is something that the, the uh, Vaibhashikas and the Sotrantikas uh, both understand. But what's m uh, a bit more difficult to understand is the way in which uh, causes depend upon uh, their effects. Mm. Would you say that uh, causes depend upon effects? Mm. 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 You couldn't really talk about something being a, a cause if, there, uh, if it didn't produce a result, could you? So it's in that sense that the cause depends upon the result. Just like you wouldn't really be able to refer to somebody as a mother uh, if she hadn't given birth to children. Somebody who hasn't given birth to a child isn't going to be isn't going to be uh, called a mother. Chetangata uh, so, uh, in actual fact, then you can see that causes uh, depend upon uh, results, and results also depend upon causes. And then, when we look at uh, dependence in the sense of depending, uh, uh, sorry, dependence in the sense of relying, um, uh, this would refer to the way in which uh, various phenomena or all phenomena exist through depending upon their parts. And this is something which the uh, the Svatantrikas are able to uh, understand. It's something that they assert. Mm. So we said that the, uh, the uh, Vibhashikas and Sotrantikas accept dependent uh, arising uh, in the sense of uh, results depending upon causes. So they, they do assert that, they can understand that, but they, they don't uh, have any uh, concept of uh, causes depending upon their effects. <laughs> And nor do they have, uh, uh, the, nor do they assert, or nor do they can they comprehend uh, dependence in the sense of uh, uh, phenomena existing through depending upon their parts. Uh, 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 and yet, uh, the, so although they can't understand that the, the Chittamatra system and also the Svatantrikas and of course the Pratangikas, they they all uh, assert uh, dependence in the sense of relying upon parts. So it's obviously. Uh, more, what do you call it, the more uh, far-reaching, this idea of uh, dependence uh, through relying on parts is more far-reaching far because it uh, applies to all phenomena as opposed to just causal phenomena. Mm. <laughs> There's a verse which starts off uh, by saying uh, the agent depends upon the uh, object. So in that uh, 
in that verse, it talks about how uh, the causes depend upon the effects, effects depend upon, uh, and also effects depend upon causes. Mm. ชีวบุรีเลเดชีวบุรีเลเดชีวบุรีเลเดชีวบุรีเลเดชีวบุรีเลเดชีวบุรีเลเดชีวบุรีเลเดชีวบุรีเลเดชีวบุรีเลเด
Now, when we come to the, uh, the, 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 uh, the uh, dependence in the sense of relying, uh, that's something which is uh, more subtle. And in actual fact, it's something that uh, only the... Tunitruvasiadi <laughs> Anyway, depending through uh, relying or depending in the sense of relying is, uh, is more subtle and certainly it's uh, uh, the, the Prasen Gigas asserted. I'm um, not quite sure. Maybe the Svatantrikas uh, can understand it. Maybe they would uh, uh, assert it. But it is more subtle anyway. Well, <laughs> Mm, this is a, a kind of dependence which uh, operates with uh, between phenomena which are uh, existing simultaneously. Of course, with the other kind of dependence, where we're talking about depending through, uh, uh, what's the uh, arising through depending, arising through depending on cause and so on. There you have uh, uh, the, the sort of a time sequence, of course, because you know you've got the cause occurring first, and after that the effect occurring. Like for example, uh, the, the, the mind and the object of the mind, or the knowledge and the and object of knowledge, these, these two are simultaneous. And it's because it has an object that it knows that it's uh, referred to as knowledge. And when we refer to something as an object of knowledge, uh, that's a term that we are applied because there is a mind that knows that that thing. Therefore, it's referred to as a, an object of uh, knowledge. So it's in this way that there's a sort of mutual dependence. So if we would use the word uh, knower, so it, uh, uh, a certain object is referred to as a knower because it has an object that it knows. If there was, if it didn't, if there were nothing that it knew, then it wouldn't be referred to as a knower. Shiva, Shiva, Sadi, Shiva, Shiva, Sadi. Koi shinya chue jiu za ni koi Shiva de se gorwa. Shija se du za ni koi shinya glo jiu za ni koi di Shija de se. Shiva da Shija, Shiva da Shija, Cema da Shija se arbo. Da kanje, da yu da yu jin se arbo. Da du du kanje da du ne chue de du du. Because uh, a particular object knows something else, that it's referred to as a knower. It's because a particular object uh, is known by something, uh, by something else, by a mind, that it's referred to as an object of knowledge. So knower and uh, that which is to be known, or knower and object of knowledge. Likewise, uh, uh, valid mind and that which is um, realized by a valid mind. And also the same connection between, is between, uh, holds between uh, the, literally what we call the object and object assessor or uh, object and uh, subject. Smaller, so we refer to something as short in relation to something longer. 
uh, refer to something as long in relation to something as uh, something shorter. Chazan do do some no aranzu do some dana antoine chuba se adita tende to do the tone chuba se adita chil tone chil chil tone chuba tim ina ta chesho din di di se adi lam tu ya min do wa tone ma ya na chil tone ma ya na chung chuo din di di se adi lam tu ya kangor wa chil tone xia gu do wa chil tone ane ren du se adi ane to bu da ma bu se adi ta tu zu kangor lo kan je. Sabuda Tungusiaro, Ta Yangudan Jibusiaro, Tatuzukangalo, Chil, Tunichi, Tatu, Tusen, Tangan, Sandan, Tishiri or Va. If you think about it, we wouldn't really be able to uh, describe something as uh, big. There wouldn't be anything which is big uh, unless you could have something that you could compare it to, uh, which, may, uh, which it looks big in comparison to something small, in other words. Likewise, uh, you wouldn't have anything which was small, you wouldn't have anything which is long or short. Or the biggest or the smallest. Um, no. uh, also like a high and low. That is a little chill, turn the kitchen shield or do do it. Chill, turn any that the top of your is to do the name. Margin sometimes a tilly toy, you don't go top of your is getting here or what. The toller yard is in a banner duck and the gaja. Bana children go house the tolu yores, you know, that sham shama jil mat, some dana di tobu yores, Riva. I mean, Tosilia, some dana, di shira tobu maris, and dig only a tobu yores there. That in the Kanjaka, two to two ten here, Janazu, Tindizu Tony Chaji, Kanjata, Mizu two skies, Kanjata, two to do your one. So all of those things are exactly the same, really. You can only, you only can describe something as big. In relation to something small, small in relation to something uh, bigger. Uh, if we think of Chelan's house, for example, we could only refer to it as we might refer to it as, uh, uh, it as a, uh, a big house, but only because the, um, uh, there is something small that we, we, we've got in mind. It's a big one. It's a big one in, in comparison to a smaller one. Then, if, if we look at something which is even uh, bigger, then we would refer to uh, that house as a small house, and that's how we lead, lead our lives somehow in, by, with these uh, kinds of うん、コンパレンス。オタドゥチェンチダンテンデセアデタ、タンタガリチダンテンデスドゥザネ、タンガンドゥテンデセアデケチャデモンゴチュンドゥワ、テンデイインザトンバレス、テンデイインザソタテ
Mm-hmm. So now you have this foundation uh, for reflecting on uh, how things are empty and uh, dependent. Otherwise, when you come across these ideas of uh, emptiness and uh, these statements that everything is empty, then you know you don't really know how to uh, use it. ตาตันตะคอคอจิซาวเตวะดิคอคอจิซาวดิคาริเรสเคสเคนิเชสนะตะชุยตันจิตาคาซากตันจิติเรสเชสนะชุยตันจิตาคาซากตันจิเสยะ
ネルグチュンネルグチュンネルグチュンネルグチュンネルグチュンネルグチュンネルグチュンネルグチュンネルグチュンネルグチュンネルグチュンネルグチュンネルグチュンネルグチュンネルグチュンネルグチュンネルグ
Now, those minds which are thinking, uh, I am coming, I'm going, I'm eating, I'm sleeping, and so on, now these are all, actually they're all valid minds. They're not uh, true grasping, they're not ignorance, and uh, they're certainly not, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're not included in or counted as uh, instances of the uh, innate eye-grasping mind. When we talk about the uh, innate eye-grasping mind, that's actually uh, a form of true grasping. In fact, it's a, a form of uh, uh, innate true grasping, which is considered to be the root of psychic existence. <laughs> And it's also a little bit uh, complicated to uh, figure out the, the, the way in which these two types of mind arise, namely the, uh, the, the mere, what we might call the mere eye-grasping mind and the innate eye-grasping mind. Mm. Kanja now we uh, say that the, uh, the uh, person is uh, merely designated upon the aggregates. Furthermore, we say that uh, uh, the, uh, the person, uh, in other words, uh, what it is that, when we're trying to identify the person in the sense of what it is that uh, comes from, uh, came from, uh, Pa uh, past lives to this goes from uh, this life on to future lives, uh, we identify that as the, the mere eye. And that mere eye uh, is also something which is uh, merely uh, labeled upon the, um, the, uh, the continuity of or the stream of the mental consciousness. So now when we want to know uh, really what the person is, then the, uh, literally the, uh, uh, an instance or an uh, illustration of the person, what the person really is, is the mere eye. Uh, and so the 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 person you know the is is uh, the the mere eye and that mere eye is something which is uh, merely designated upon uh, the four or five aggregates. When we say four or five, uh, this is because uh, this reflects the fact that the uh, the beings in the form and uh, desired form realm have five aggregates, and the, the the beings in the formless realm have only four aggregates. So the so the uh, the mere eye is designated on the continuity of the aggregates, or designated on the merely designated on the continuity of the four or five aggregates. So we say that the, uh, this mere eye is uh, designated on the, uh, the four or five aggregates, or more specifically, or more precisely, it's uh, uh, merely designated upon the continuity of the aggregates. So now within the uh, the four of our five aggregates, when we say that the, the, the this mere eye is designated on the continuity of the aggregates, um, within that specifically 
what it's uh, imputed on is the continuity of the uh, mental consciousness. The gyanle. No. Now he is pumbu gyanle ya ta ngazam sata ta bari kanje ngazam ta be hi de de hi de ta nam hi is pumbu gyanle de kansa ta be hi de nam hi is pumbu gyanle de. Thus the uh, the uh, the basis of imputation of the mere eye is the uh, continuity of the uh, the yunra, the continuity of the mental consciousness, and we can say likewise that it's the uh, the continuity of the mental consciousness which is the base of imputation of the person. Mm. So we can say, uh, sort of roughly speaking, in a sense that uh, the, uh, the the person, the, the mere eye, is uh, designated on or merely designated on uh, the continu uh, on the aggregates, more specifically on the continuity of the aggregates. More specifically than that, is uh, merely uh, designated on the continuity of the a consciousness aggregate, and specifically within the consciousness aggregate, uh, it's merely designated on the continuity of the uh, mental consciousness, the continuity or the stream of the mental consciousness. Kansa Namshi <laughs> Tangue <laughs> There's a, um, a passage which, uh, uh, which alludes to the fact that the Vibashikas, uh, there are uh, Vibashikas who uh, assert that the five aggregates are the, uh, uh, are the person. Uh, there, are, in fact, there are various assertions within the Vibhashika system, including the assertion that it's the uh, that the person is the mind, <coughs> and then uh, the uh, the, uh, the Swatantrika Swatantrikas, uh, the you know these Swatantrikas whose assertions mainly are, uh, are in agreement with the Swatantrikas. They and the Swatantrikas, Swatantrikas themselves uh, assert that the um, uh, the the, the uh, when you look within the aggregates for what the uh, the person really is uh, then you find uh, a self existing you know a person which can be identified as the mental uh, the, the men sorry the, the consciousness aggregate and then uh, when it comes to the uh, when we when you look at the chitabhantra system they say that uh, what you find is the uh, the um, uh, the alive is jnana or the uh, foundation consciousness and its own, uh, it's, so everybody apart from the um, pra, uh, prasangikas, uh, everybody, all of the, the, the systems of tenets, they all say that uh, when you search for the uh, person within the aggregates, you find something self-existent which you can identify as that person. 
And uh, this is something that the Prasangikas uh, don't do at all. They say that uh, the, the person is the mere eye. So uh, what that m word mere there implies is that, uh, that, uh, that, there is, uh, that the person is the eye which isn't uh, inherently existent or self-existent, mm -hmm. something which can't be found within the aggregates. Mm -hmm. Okay. What we can say then is that everybody apart from the Prasangikas, uh, since they say that the uh, person is self-existent, uh, what they're uh, uh, asserting is that when you look within the aggregates, you're going to be able to find a, a self-existing person. So this is completely different from the prasangika idea, which is that the, uh, the person is uh, an, uh, empty of, in, uh, of uh, self-existence and therefore can't be found in the aggregates. Sometimes <laughs> Now let's go back to uh, the, uh, this point that we started out with, the distinction uh, between the uh, innate eye-grasping mind and the valid conventional uh, eye-grasping mind and we were talking about the, uh, the order in which they occur. So uh, obviously with the innate eye-grasping mind, we've got the mind which uh, refers to the eye and thinks it's inherently existent. Then the, this valid uh, eye-grasping mind, conventional mind, uh, is what the, uh, is the, the refers to the, 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 the mind thinking, I'm coming, I'm going, I'm eating, sleeping, and so on. So the one which occurs first is the uh, valid eye-grasping mind. First of all, uh, referring to the, uh, the, the aggregates, there is uh, a mind uh, thinking uh, I, and that's a, a valid mind. So that's the first one that arises. Mm -hmm. The, uh, the person appears to that uh, valid eye-grasping mind to be truly existent. Ngazi <laughs> Thus, despite being a valid mind, it's uh, a mistaken mind. And it's referred to as mistaken simply because the, 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 there's a mistake in the way things appear to it because the person appears self-existent, even though it's not self-existent, or it appears, to use the term we, um, I used just now, the, it, it appears truly existent, even though it's not. So that's a mistaken appearance. So it's a mistaken mind, but it's still a, a valid mind. Then, uh, subsequently, uh, um, uh, there is a, uh, the, the inborn eye-grasping mind becomes manifest. And uh, how that happens is that when uh, uh, the, that I, which, uh, which is appearing to be truly existent, is actually grasped as truly existent, 
then that mind which is uh, grasping that I as truly existent as it appears is the uh, innate eye-grasping mind. So uh, at that point, that innate eye-grasping mind has become manifest. Of course, it was already there uh, in the form of a, a, a seed or a sort of a, a latency, a potential. Um, uh, it's actually been that, you know, it's, it's always there, uh, either uh, in a manifest way or in the form of a, uh, a seed all, all the time that we're in cyclic existence. And this is something which is very important to, to understand and very useful to understand. It can be a little bit uh, confusing when you, know, you consider that sometimes we use the word, uh, uh, the term eye grasping mind or the expression eye grasping mind. Uh, to refer to a valid mind which is grasping at uh, the eye or apprehending uh, the eye. And sometimes it's referring to uh, a mind which is grasping the eye as self-existent. And uh, in that case, it's actually a true grasping and it's uh, actually the root of cyclic existence. So, <laughs> Furthermore, when we uh, use the terms sometimes I, sometimes self, sometimes a person, it's important to bear in mind that these mean exactly the same thing. They're exactly the same. I, self, person, being also, that's a, the, a fourth term. These are, in fact, synonyms. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. 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 Uh, the the killing those and the such the killing with those the this this the killing killing it is the Jeremiah. It's not actually uh, stated clearly in the scriptures. Uh, somehow, uh, in the uh, the the what do you call it, the Swatantrika writings, you do come across uh, the definition of dependent arising stated as ex uh, established through depending upon parts. And there's sort of, it's sort of in implied uh, 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 that, that uh, although the Vaibhashikas uh, uh, accept uh, dependent arising in the sense of depending upon uh, causes and conditions, it sort of implies that they don't uh, 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 accept uh, dependence through reliance or de you know, dependent arising in the sense of uh, uh, relying like uh, like that, but it's not uh, really uh, stated that clearly. Penanti girwa kaso ragwa dunzu rangi chashel ten chubda ragwa dunzu shevi na ta kunzu kanje tendelo lea da yan taran dunzu rangi chashel ten chubda di tamuji gani shevi na 
If you bear in mind that when we talk about the existing through depending upon parts, there could be that could be understood on a uh, on different levels also, you know, sort of more gross uh, the way it works with more uh, grosser objects and with the, on a more subtle level. So there's no reason why they wouldn't understand <coughs> how it works with uh, grosser objects, gross forms and so on. But uh, the, then uh, it would seem reasonable to say that they wouldn't understand it uh, in the most in its most subtle form as understood by the prasangikas. Pena sujengi ngo boruji pena tuje gendu ju kumbu su ragbar boruji ta chamu tinde duin tu da ji tu da te tinde da ha kuru wa ta di kanje tu da jam ba mau tu da zan ma jam ni zo se ba ha kuru yoru wa. In actual fact, even if you haven't uh, particularly trained in the tenets, you would still be able to understand how things uh, exist through depending upon particles. But nevertheless, uh, it would seem that if you were to ex uh, express it on a more subtle level, then uh, maybe they wouldn't understand. Like for example, if you were to start talking about it in terms of uh, things being empty of inherent existence, so they wouldn't be able to accept that, would they? Because they wouldn't be able to accept the, the, the sort of the basic premise that what you're talking about uh, is something which is empty of in, uh, inherent existence. If you were to uh, uh, ask them, is form, which is empty of inherent existence, something, you know, gross form, which is in fact, which is empty of inherent existence, uh, something which depends upon uh, a sort of a uh, combination of uh, particles, then they wouldn't be able to accept that, would they? Uh, so it seems that uh, if you were to explain things, uh, you know, talk about this in uh, on a subtle level, then they wouldn't accept it on a more uh, superficial level than they would. Were there any other questions? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the third kind of dependence, uh, like the example with object and object possessor. Yeah. You were, I, I think I, if I understood correctly, you were saying that this applies to phenomena which are simultaneous. Yeah. But like, what about cause and effect, which aren't? Uh huh. ま、で、あの、で、その、あの、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で
That's why I started talking about uh, the knowers and the known or knowables. So something is a knowable because there's a mind that knows it. Something is a knower because there's something which it knows. And likewise, uh, object and object possessor. So it's called an object because there's something which possesses it in the sense of knowing it or expressing it or whatever. And then uh, something is going to be referred to as a, an object possessor because there's some object which it uh, possesses in some sense, like knowing it or expressing it and so on. And likewise with the valid mind and its object. Mm. Yeah. Here's, the, here's the story of the Buddha. He learned that he went to these different teachers and learned these things and then found out that they didn't work. He continued to search. So yesterday he was talking about Tsongkhapa and how he went into this state of like no objects in the mm. mind. Mm. So did is there did he then write about it and say it didn't work? Mm. Or what did what was his do they was there writings about his experience with that? Mm. How did he end up rejecting it? Mm. เออเด้อเด้อเด้อเด้อเด้อเด้อเด้อเด้อเด้อเด้อเด้อเด้อเด้อเด้อเด้อเด้อเด้อเด้อเด้อเด้อเด้อเด้อเด้อเด้อเด
uh, there doesn't seem to be uh, uh, exactly uh, uh, some kind of uh, text that uh, Jeremy Shea composed explaining how he uh, generated that view. All we know is that at that, uh, at that time, uh, all of the great masters agreed that the, the ultimate view was this, uh, this view, of, um, uh, view that takes uh, nothing at all to mind. And um, so whether we think of the the, uh, the great experts in uh, the uh, or those who were known as or claimed to be great experts in the middle way or the uh, experts in the uh, view or whatever their uh, f uh, field of expertise might have been they all it seems that they all agreed what, whichever tradition they were from because we know that uh, Jeremy Shea went to listen to these teachings from uh, great uh, Nyingma masters Sakya Kagyu masters and so on so they it seems that everybody agreed that this was the ultimate uh, the pinnacle uh, view at that time. And so this was the view that uh, Jeremy Shea had been meditated on, meditating on and had considered to be the highest uh, view. And so he found out f uh, through, depending upon uh, Manjushri, that it wasn't really, um, uh, it, was, it wasn't the highest view at all. And then gradually, depending upon the, uh, the, this text, the Buddha Palata, he came to uh, find the, the, the real uh, uh, view, and there is um, if you if you look in his uh, uh, his uh, text uh, the the, uh, the great commentary on the fun fundamental verses of on wisdom. So there are uh, a couple of um, um, passages there which seem to be sort of like uh, s uh, concord with the this view of the uh, that doesn't take anything to mind, and uh, also if you. Uh, looking uh, one of his uh, texts, which is called uh, the the um, sort of, I think the um, like the expression of realizations in relation to um, the Dagdungura, uh, the always crying uh, Bodhisattva. So there's one uh, line there which uh, uh, also seems to um, uh, be about the, this this view. Um, but uh, anyway, we know that um, uh, eventually uh, uh, Jeremy Shea did. Uh, gained the correct view. Anyway,我们知道，假如我们去到处面对土著，到处面对土著呢，你看见，他可能在土著上呢，你就是讲白讲的，明啊，他看见，路边路主路边路主西啊，你你到白看见新的书籍，路边路主的三界人龙灯下
Chelama and Tawananda Gul Majigone, Chel Tawe Cheva Yonsu Mazove Negosu, and two Jukunzu in Batawe Cheva Yonsu Zonta, Dine March and two series and Dakanje, Tite the Mendo Cheva Yosa, two Sevich and Tarash Ajari, Tikorte, Tara Yori. The way that Jeremy Shea uh, finally arrived at his uh, uh, insight into the, uh, the true, uh, correct view was through relying on the the, uh, the pith instructions from Manjushri and also by studying the texts of uh, uh, Nagarjuna and likewise the, the, the writings of Chandrakirti who is regarded as uh, having come from uh, another world expressly to, um, uh, to clarify and to spread the, uh, the, the, the teaching of uh, Nagarjuna. So uh, uh, apart from that uh, we, we understand that uh, up until then, even though of course that in all likely, uh, in all likelihood there were some pe there, there must have been some people who had the correct view, but uh, it was uh, very uh, it would be very difficult to point somebody out. It seems that uh, practically everybody uh, agreed that the ultimate view was this view of taking uh, nothing to mind. So they, they simply weren't able to understand the, the finer points uh, that, uh, uh, that Nagarjuna and uh, Chandrakirti and so on uh, were teaching. So as I mentioned, uh, you find certain uh, passages in the, uh, the, the commentary on the fundamental verses on wisdom uh, that seem to be in a sort of in, a, in, in the style of or in, the, in accordance with, the, with that view. And uh, instead of uh, somehow erasing that from the text and uh, rewriting it, or uh, instead of actually mentioning it, uh, uh, mentioning that he'd uh, made a mistake, uh, that uh, you know this is a, that this was written at a time when he had that view and that he developed uh, since then, uh, he left it as it uh, as it was. And uh, there is some kind of uh, agreement amongst uh, scholars that up to a certain point in that. Uh, text, uh, Jerem Shea was writing uh, while still having that uh, view and considering that view to, the, to be the, the highest view and that from that point onwards uh, it was all written ha uh, after having gained the, the correct view. The, 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 the uh, Sashi teaching, the, the, the great commentary on the, the fundamental uh, verses. Mm <laughs> Kanja Saju Tijugu de lamri chamuje. Tijugu de la ya kanje 
So I, uh, uh, I'm not totally sure, but I seem to remember from listening, you know, to his uh, holiness's teachings. Uh, but I mean, of course, the thing is, the trouble is, you tend to one tends to forget. But um, that uh, first of all, what he composed were the uh, the the two great commentaries or treatises on the uh, the fundamental verses, the, and then uh, and on the um, entering uh, what you call it, the supplement to the middle way. Then after that, the so the excellent explanation uh, of the uh, definitive and provisional meaning. Then the the uh, the Lamrim Chemmo, which uh, he was encouraged to write by uh, Manjushri, and uh, after that the you know, like the the last of all the middle uh, Lamrim, which is often referred to as the the small Lamrim, uh, but sometimes also we use the word small Lamrim to refer to that very short one. But so uh, we can say it's the middle. Uh, Lamrim, and in that uh, he sort of, uh, instead of uh, uh, explaining things in a very, very sort of like a, uh, extensive way, he he writes in a much more summarized way. Mm. Anyway, the one that was uh, written right uh, towards the end of his life would have been the this middle lamb rim. So the point is that your question was, wasn't the, uh, the, uh, the, one, the, the commentary on the uh, fundamental verses uh, written later on in his life? And so the answer is no. It was, that was written earlier on. The one that was written later on was the middle lamb rim. Anyway, there are those passages, although I couldn't actually, um, you know, sort of recite them. Like that. Mm. Mm. Anyway, the, um, we know that at a certain uh, stage in his life he had this uh, view, the view of uh, the, the thing which takes nothing at all to mind. And um, it's uh, generally understood these days that uh, those passages, uh, passages in that text, the, the commentary on the uh, fundamental verses, is uh, was written at a time when he still had that view, and uh, instead of uh, erasing that from the text uh, and, uh, and then carrying on, he simply carried on, left it as it, as it was, and so it's understood these days that up, up until a certain point, it was while he still had the view. From then onwards. It's when he had the, the, the unmistaken perfect view. Um, we know that the, the uh, Buddha himself uh, taught uh, the view of emptiness uh, in the middle turning of the wheel and that of course you know, before he uh, passed away there would have been many people that had a, a correct understanding of it. Then, uh, in between his passing away and uh, Nagarjuna, the arrival of Nagarjuna, uh, there was a, a period when uh, there, we don't find uh, writings which explain about uh, the view. Mm. 
Sebu Shuji, Mavich and Yamjan, any Lumen Ludu with a Sanja Krangi, any one young and then Lord did to do Lumen Ludu singing in Guri, and Ting at Tombany, you go to pass Sebu Suri, Stindesuni, any Hindu Suji in Ba, Chetanta, Hindu Suji singing the Tingi Delia, Karinata, Hugh Tanting to Hindu Suji singing the Yorba Kanje, Nargi Langati, Sever and Mav the Pa, Pet Kali, Pet Sebu Servicista. Margi Langaji, you will serve a maid of the Kanje. Did they come the serve? She ran a maid of the Did they come the serve? So that in the cheese were Kanje. She done that serve, that you do you did Kanje. Did they come the serve? I made of that in the cheese were. So uh, the, it, it would seem that uh, in the sometime during that intervening, intervening period, uh, this, uh, there was a uh, what we call could describe it as a degeneration of the in the understanding of the view. Probably for uh, a couple of generations after the Buddha passed away, people was still had a clear understanding, but then uh, afterwards it uh, degenerated. And that doesn't mean, of course, that there weren't people that uh, uh, realized the view at all anywhere. It just means that in this world, somehow the, the understanding, clear understanding had become uh, lost for a while. And then uh, Nagarjuna came along. He was actually predicted by the Buddha. The Buddha had said that um, uh, Nagarjuna would come along and um, uh, restore uh, that, uh, that, uh, that side of his uh, teachings. So um, I, I can't quite remember the definition for a, um, what they call a, um, um, what do they call it, a, a charity, what do they call it, charioteer. They usually refer to, they use this term charioteer for uh, uh, Nagarjuna for the, uh, in terms of the work that he did. Uh, but anyway, it, what it means is basically uh, that, that um, the way had become uh, lost, so nobody uh, knew, knew the way. So he was like a charioteer that uh, had cleared out the, the way for others to be able to uh, pass along. ただ、ルルルギジェンダジェスンダニケガケバマンゴヨレトジトムヒャゲテンジュマンゴトウシェンヨレ。カンジェ。ジェラママハベパドアニ。ペベナンリヤタカンジェタワディ。ルルルギタ
Of course, uh, Mapa, Milarepa, and so forth, uh, they had uh, uh, the, uh, the complete, unmistaken, pure view. And likewise, the five great uh, uh, Sakya masters, earlier uh, Sakya masters. But uh, there was, uh, up until uh, uh, um, Jeremache, there was uh, nobody that had come along and uh, uh, written down and uh, clearly described uh, how to generate this view. So anyway, it's something like that. That uh, in actual fact, uh, Jerry Mache arrived at his understanding uh, of the view uh, through the kindness of the earlier uh, Tibetan masters by uh, you know, uh, learning from them, uh, learning from their compositions and so on. But when it came to actually realizing the, the view, uh, at that point, uh, it, it, uh, what uh, uh, he relied upon was the, uh, the, the text of Buddha Palata. And uh, ultimately he gave, uh, he sort of uh, yeah, achieved this uh, unmistaken view through depending upon the uh, the instructions of uh, Manjushri. Uh, certainly uh, before him there were these uh, great uh, masters who had a, a completely clear understanding of the view. There's no question. It's just like when you want to uh, lay down a, a, a great uh, highway there are so many things you need to do prior to that, like uh, making application for, uh, to the various authorities for you know, uh, doing the work and so on. You have to do all sorts of things like, um, uh, you know, like uh, um, uh, laying down the foundations, uh, sort of like, you know, making the, the line, uh, uh, sort of marking out the line which, which the road is going to follow and, uh, you know, preparing the, the foundation and, uh, and, and uh, making the various sort of different uh, layers of the, that the road is going to be built on and so on. So you had these uh, uh, great uh, masters pr um, prior to Jerim Bajie who had uh, uh, who were responsible for uh, the work of preparing the way in a sense, just like somebody who's uh, made all the applications for you know for permission to do the uh, the to build to, to the, lay the road and uh, all of those were previous you know the prior uh, preparations um, and then uh, depending upon that then uh, Jerem she was uh, able to um, uh, clearly explain uh, the view just like the the person who comes along and actually finally uh, lays the uh, the road so anyway thank you that's maybe uh, <laughs>